Welcome back to the Nope Coach Podcast, episode 75, Outgrowing Phobias. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. I've invited back Fred to speak about this. So if you haven't listened to the last episode, uh, episode 74, it's not a journey, it's an odyssey. Uh, Fred mentioned phobias, which has now brought up lots of questions for me. (laughs) So when I know you work with people with phobias, what is normally or nominally the turning point where somebody will actually go, now's the time that I want to address this? Is there a theme that you see? I'm I'm curious. That is a good question. I think it perhaps depends on, I keep saying it's a good question, this one in particular, because I don't know if I necessarily have an easy answer for this. It depends on the person. Some people take uh, steps on it well in advance, um, like someone I work with about phobia bridges, um, some people deal with it when it's an immediate thing. A classic example is fear of flying. Mm, mm. I've got a flight coming up in like five days. I've been avoiding doing anything about it for a long time now. And now, <laughs> now the fear is getting me. I've got to deal with it. Um, Do you find with a deadline like that, like I've got to fly, like, you know, it, it motivates them as in it will work faster or it's sometimes too much pressure and they've like left it too long? This again is such a like a personal experience. So, for example, um, working with someone now who has a particular phobia, um, I don't want to go into their details, um, but they've developed over 60 odd years, 70 years, a habit of ignoring the sensations that go with it. Mm. Now, just because you feel something. It doesn't mean that we don't actually, would rather just because we don't, we don't have an appreciation consciously of feeling something. It doesn't mean that we don't have, that we don't, we don't have those feelings. We're not affected by them. Um, like for example, chronic pain, something I spent a long, long time with, like a twenty something years at least, right? Just because it wasn't there, it doesn't mean that it wasn't affecting my energy levels. It doesn't mean that it was affecting my cognition and my movements and all the rest of this stuff. Uh, and we see it. We see it out in the world, um, people acting um, incongruently, shall we say. People, especially with the pandemic and things like this. Just because oh, 100%. Is- yeah. And I imagine with the pandemic, things like agoraphobia, like, you know, fear of things or, you know, germ. I'm not what the word for germophobia is, but a lot of the things that, you know, in the past could have been more easily hidden, even from self, come to the forefront in times like currently. And they are evident to other people, even if they're not evident to ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So where have we got onto this from? Oh, in terms of dealing with it. But also, so this person I've been dealing with for their particular phobia, or helping uh, outgrow the phobia, um, they, they've they worked out patterns of avoiding the experience, avoiding oh, yeah. dealing with it, avoiding the internal stuff. But I promised to bring in a particular picture of their phobia because it was... Um, easier ethically than bringing in the particular creature <laughs> right the dead one um so uh, even just reaching for this picture immediately brings up the sensations oh wait a minute whatever you're doing there you kind of got me i'm starting to get something right um so sometimes it makes it easier sometimes it makes it the point of greatest conflict and more challenging yes Yes. And the other thing I was going to ask about it is because I'm, I'm, you know, when, so the timings, how long a piece of the string will vary from person to person. Mm. When people want to, how often is it like, I want to be able to tolerate this thing? We touched on this in the last episode. Like, I, I want to be able to tolerate water for the sake of my children, or I want to be able to tolerate a flight because I want to catch up with family, or, you know, there's an important business trip that I have to take, or I'll lose my job, or I don't know what it is versus actually this you know how i'm thinking it was something like flying or swimming how much it could open up their life potentially like if i loved flying or if, especially like in australia there's a lot of water around here um both flying and, and water is you, you you could avoid it but it'd be a lot more challenging you'd never be able to go to another country because you'd have to go on a cruise ship and sail but then you'd be on water the whole time so you know the the mind boggles but it's kind of like I think there's a difference between I'm going to tolerate this thing and actually I want to enjoy it Mm -hmm. 
and what do you see with people? Because I'm just thinking, oh, even public speaking, like some of the best public speakers, when you listen to their backstory or whatever, often were cripplingly shy and you're like, what? (laughs) Do you find with people like they, when they come to you for help with phobias, it's kind of like, I just want to deal with this so I can, you know, go about my merry way. Or actually, I think there's a difference too between, because we were talking on the last episode, hypnotherapy can sometimes be marketed as I will fix you, which gives agency to the hypnotherapist, which both of us get on a tear about. But the other thing too, it's one session or it's like a one and done. Whereas this is, you know, it could be a journey because I imagine there could be uncovering things too. Like, is it really the fear of public speaking or is it something to do with humiliation or embarrassment or something that's happened as a child or, you know, there's so many layers to this. And what I'm wanting for people who are listening to this to take into account or to consider, if you've had an experience where you've maybe engaged a hypnotherapist or tried to address a phobia and you haven't had that magic one undone, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> um, this is like, it, it can be, there's many layers to this. Yes. Yeah, indeed. I, I mean, I had loads of thoughts as you described all of that. And now we've reached the end of it. <laughs> Go, so jump things. in wherever, you know, like sometimes I can so get, be hard to interrupt. <laughs> My little ring thing's falling off the top up there. Uh, I got rather excited. There we go. Sorry about that. So, um, yeah. So, like, we link back to the um, the crippling shyness thing. Like, just, it might be because I'd learned the pattern of... Um, being socialized at a young age to care a lot about what other people think i'm sure that's something that your listeners have no idea what it's like to experience no never you're on the wrong show (laughs) Um, it might just be that it might be over time um that certain sounds help us to help ourselves to the past a little bit like if someone raises their voice it might help ourselves to a little bit of fear that we learned when we were younger it might be that there's just too much going on in a um, like a four or five person conversation. By the time we've come up with something to say, we've talked to ourselves too much that we don't, you know, like the conversation's become, moved on fast. and you look really like a weirdo because they're like, What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it might be it might be any or all of these or none of them. And sometimes it might just come down to a belief that we've acquired over time. Something like a, I'm worthless. Yeah, right? and it doesn't matter how much you learn to deal with, you know, the the um, mechanics of a conversation. But if you still believe that you're worthless, it's going to be an uphill struggle, never really rewarding or satisfying. Um, yeah. So, so there's, there's, there can be quite a lot going on. So I think it's important to look at it as this this odyssey all the way. Yeah, through. and d- unconditioning, deconditioning, reconditioning. I don't know what word I'm looking for, but the things that you brought up something that could have happened as a child or as a younger person that you're expecting. So like very first time I started doing you know webinars, group trainings, things like that, people would be looking down. I assumed they were like on their phones and tuning out. I was like, oh, I'm boring people. Like, you know, because I have things of when I was younger and people were tuning out or whatever. And then at the end, someone's saying like, I've taken like 10 pages of notes. So, oh, they were writing? <laughs> Or when you get yep. an email and it starts with subject heading about your podcast and like the younger yep. version of me is like, someone's going to tell me off for the swearing or I spoke too fast or I said something inappropriate or whatever. And then it's, oh, I loved it. So I think, you know, back into the the phobias or, th- or things, you know, overcoming them or outgrowing them, the version mm-hmm. of you that's expecting the smackdown or the, or the repercussion or the disinterest, it's that is still there. But it's you know growing the or outgrowing into the version of you that's like oh no they're taking notes or whatever if they're on their phone that's okay they don't have to come back next time. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you remind me of backsliding. Like people sometimes um, go to see a hypnotherapist for stopping smoking, and a year later, oh, I went back to smoking again. Well, okay, but you stopped for a year. <clears throat> like just because you stop doing something it doesn't mean that magically that uh, that particular pattern or that neural pathway that's been well rehearsed over the years magically has been excised and is no longer there that's just not how the mind works it's not how the brain works it's not how hypnotherapy works it's not how any kind of change modality works you, know, you can still go back and do the same behavior just because 
you know, like at one point you learn to suck your thumb or crap your pants. It doesn't mean you go around as an adult doing it. You can still do it, right? But, you but the thing is, you know what's interesting? If, so, if one of those things happens as an adult, you're like, oh, that's majorly inconvenient and deal with it. But you're not suddenly like, I'm a toddler again. You're like, oh, that was unfortunate. Exactly. But something like yeah. smoking or overeating or something, you beat yourself up and end up on this shame blame thing that can make that little backslide into a, a into an issue. What you were talking about just then, have you ever watched, there's a YouTube clip called The Backward Bicycle? Oh, this is one of the popular science popularizers, uh, big YouTube guys, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So for anyone listening, after you've listened to this episode, go Google the backward bicycle. You'll find it, but I'll summarize it. So this bloke, as a joke at his workplace, these people, these engineers rewired his bicycle so that when he turned the steering wheel right, he went left. And when he turned the steering wheel left, he went right. And he was like, well, cognitively, like in my brain, I understand this conceptually. So how hard could it be? And he could not ride the bicycle that way. And then he took this to stage and he went around the world and he's a public speaker and um, he, he has this clip of it in his video. It took him eight months to be able to master this skill, eight months of practicing for like 20 minutes a day or something. And then he went to Prague or I don't know, geography is not my strong suit. And they only had regular bicycles there. He didn't take his with him. And he literally could not ride a normal bike. He couldn't because he'd been riding his backwards bicycle and people were laughing at him thinking he was joking because he couldn't ride the regular bike. And he's like, no, I'm serious. But it only took him 20 minutes to be able to ride it as good as day. So when it's backsliding, if you've overcome smoking, drinking, eating or something, and and then in moments usually of great stress or you know when things are happening, you backslide into previous habits. As you said, the neural pathway is not gone. It's still there. But then again, after he'd learnt it, he could remaster the skill. He says it much better in his video but that just gave me so much peace because there's still moments where I go and eat you know slam a bag of Tim Tams and I'm like oh, shit this is suboptimal but I don't go in the guilt shame blame I'm a terrible person cycle anymore it's just like move on yes another important part of the odyssey like just because you you yeah you're like life is for the living right like yes. if you can't like occasionally you can if you can't if you, how best to describe this I like I like beer, right? It doesn't mean you know if I if I have more beers in one particular day, it doesn't mean that I'm automatically falling off a bandwagon or becoming a major drinker or whatever. It just means like one particular day I had some more beers, you know. If I have some refined sugar, right? Yeah, life's yeah. for living, diets for dying. <laughs> Very nice. So, Fred, like you, where? You just a of days. Oh, oh yeah, just for a couple of days then that's that's fine like the important part is that you have the choice the agency to go back rather than catastrophizing yeah you've built the new neural pathway it hasn't disappeared same as the old one hasn't disappeared so if anyone listening if you're having a backsliding a moment a couple of days even a couple of weeks the other pathway is still there you can still keep reactivating it there's nothing wrong with you for having you know a human moment we're all human <laughs> where can people find you and um yeah, look into all the all the stuff you have going on. You can find me at mindsparodyssey.com. That's O-D-Y-S-S-E-Y, uh, mindsparodyssey.com. You can find me there for hypnotherapy sessions. There's always the latest 30-minute recording I've got, taking people to a spa in the mind uh, to help people explore relaxation, get rid of stress, fall asleep more easily in under 30 minutes, and otherwise, like, actually enjoy exploring what it's like to have a mind and the cool stuff that comes with it i was gonna say fall asleep more easily you've got a voice like you could fall asleep to without being fancy i was like maybe you should second as a uh reading for audible <laughs> very calming yeah. anywho thank you so thank much you. for joining us fred thank you for Suzanne. listening everyone we'll catch you on the next one bye for now